Hey, nice to chat with you. I'm so uh, happy that I get to talk with you. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm sure the same is with you, of course, obviously. Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, how do these great projects, I mean, you've done so many awesome shows and films. How, how do these great projects find their way to you? You know, I mean, I think that casting is a repeat business. You know, you, you, once you have a good working relationship with people or directors or producers or writers, that tends to continue. So the David Simon crew you know goes back for me to the wire and all the stuff we've done and Dennis Lehane came out of that so we knew each other a bit because of you know those group of novelists who were now writing television um but I think you know occasionally something will just come up because people have seen things and are interested but I find that um it's kind of a circular business in that way so when uh, it did uh, Dennis Lane call, like email you or something and said, hey, I got this project. Yeah, I think so. Something like that. That makes things easy. It makes things easy. <laughs> I loved working with Dennis. He's just perfectly my kind of showrunner, writer, producer. Do he and uh, David Simon have a lot of things in common? Because obviously you've worked with him a bunch of times, too. Well, it's just the quality of the writing and the development of character. And it's just, a, you know, it's a it's a kind of attention to detail and storytelling that goes pretty deep. And it, that makes my job um, more interesting and in some ways easier because you're tackling complex um, relationships and characters. So uh, when uh, you say, yes, I'm going to do this, are any of the actors already sort of attached to it or uh, do you start making lists immediately? Um, every project's different. In this case, Taryn was attached to Blackbird. Um, so that happened before I came on. And it's hard to, not to say no to him because he was great. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of really wonderful producers on this project who I had worked with previously on HBO projects. So that also is incredibly helpful when you're working with people who are really knowledgeable about how to make good television. So for each role, you make a, a, a list of how many people you're, uh, uh, you're interested in for, I guess, each role? It depends on the, what the role is. Sometimes you're making lists and uh, showing the body of work such as it is to um, the creative decision makers and sometimes you're doing auditions. I mean, so, Greg Kinnear came out of a list. Um, Sepeda Moafi auditioned. What about uh, uh, Paul? Uh, what about Paul? Paul, everybody had been talking about for some time. And we did one kind of work session with him. So did when you guys first uh, like talked with him and he came in, uh, does, is that character, because it just blew me away watching him. Was that already fully formed? You know, nothing's fully formed until you start rehearsing and you get going, but you know, he is a meticulous uh, preparer. He does an enormous amount of research. He gets himself to, you know, every actor is different, but you, you need to get yourself to the place where you're comfortable enough to just be in the moment. And um, a lot of it was there. Wow, that's amazing to me. Um, had you, I, had you like seen a ton of his work before? Yeah. And he's, I've read with him before. I mean, the thing about, you know, what I do is you're usually not meeting people for the first time over a certain age. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, what was the hardest role to, to cast for in this? Well, it for sure would have been that role if he hadn't <laughs> been so singularly able to get in there. But um, I'm trying to think what was hard. You know, casting is just hard, but there was nothing in this that presented what felt like huge obstacles. It's also just not the way Dennis and I work. We just get down to it and do it. And he's not somebody who 
He's very articulate, very clear, and very fast, which is great for me. When you're uh, reading a script, do uh, images just come into your mind of like actors who would be perfect for certain roles? Never. I read scripts the way I read uh, novels. So I, I sort of see a, I see the character, but until I'm actually working on something, I don't fit actual living, breathing actors into it. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it helps in a way because this is all about, you know, the connective tissue of the whole story that you're telling. It's not just about, you know, who's right for something when you've only read this much. I, I think it's, I need to sort of understand the whole. You know, I just thought of this question, but when you are like, just like sitting around, like, watching you know tv on a friday saturday night or watching a movie are you always working you know like just kind of scanning and watching uh, people actors work can you ever just enjoy a, a something yeah i can but i watch a lot of uh scandinavian crime dramas and things where i'm not as familiar with the actors because mm -hmm. it helps me to just pop into story so after you cast like the first couple episodes how and you know you have to cast uh, the other uh, episodes but how involved are you in the day-to-day -day parts of the show i mean besides your casting uh, uh aspect of it well i mean casting is a lot of admin as well you know a lot of the guest actors you know aren't in it for the whole thing so if the schedule changes we have to redo the deal and hire them and make sure they're available so you're you're working the whole time um, I kind of said this before, but you've cast so many of not only my favorite TV shows, but uh, a lot of people's shows, uh, including uh, as a former Maryland boy, one of the best shows ever, The Wire. Uh, as you were in the middle of it, uh, did it ever feel like you were working on like greatness? No, it, it, I mean, we all knew it, we, we all loved it. And I think we knew that it was unique and that it was authentically telling a story about real people. But you have to understand in any David Simon project, it is like triage all the time. There are 50 people in every scene. Um, you know, when we did the deuce, it's the same thing. You're just in it and trying to get through it, making sure that you're doing the most creative and um, appropriate casting you can to get sort of from A to B. You also, in something like The Wire, this was true on The Deuce too, when you're casting the principal characters in the beginning, you're, it's, it is actually the casting process that's helping you to understand who those characters are and that somebody who read for this might be better for this and blah, blah, blah. It's like you're putting a puzzle together. I, I, I did an episode of a Homicide when he was uh, uh, running it. And uh, one of my scenes, he, he was just so singularly focused on what I needed to do. And he like took me aside and he was just so great to me and so nice. And it, 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 he, he was great. I can see why you guys, uh, why you like working with him. So wait, he had written, Tom Fontana ran Homicide. Well, no, I mean, yeah, he, he had wrote the episode, but uh, he was right. there on set with, with, right. uh, with well, us. Yeah, and that's a very that. extremely common thing in, the, in that world. They were very good about that. Um, you know, you've introduced so many well-known actors, uh, Idris Elba of The Wire, uh, Ozark, Julia Garner, uh, J.K. Simmons with uh, Oz. Um, and I know he was like on Broadway prior. I think, was he on Broadway prior to that? I can't remember. Guys and Dolls. Yeah, I can't quite remember. Does that guy, does that make you feel good that you kind of jumpstarted, start all these like now hugely famous uh, people's careers? I mean, if you if I thought about it that way, I don't really. I mean, I think the joy is that matching a great actor to a great role, which creates something sort of magical that you can't really put your finger on, is just great for them. You know, that part is really thrilling. And also I think the bonds that casting directors and actors have is very singular. You know, we have no skin in the game. We don't get a commission. So if in a, in a case like that, or you know, a lot of the people I cast in Generation Kill and The Wire, that there's a purity to that kind of um, friendship that really comes out of that shared experience. Um, there's a, a, a saying where uh, you don't uh, you don't try and book the audition; you try and book the room. 
Okay, I've never heard that. No, you never have? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, <laughs> with that, uh, you cast Lee Turgenson in a lot of things. So Thank I was you. thinking that's what he, he like booked the room and you keep on calling him back. What is it about him? I, I've interviewed him a couple of times and I think he's great. But what is it about him that you keep calling him back? Well, I love Lee. And the thing is, Lee is fearless. Um, he, he will go in whatever direction. You know, he's an incredibly skilled um, artist and he is not afraid of, you know, going wherever a character needs to go. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. Yeah, I think he's great. Um, uh, so you also cast a lot of shows with smaller roles throughout every episode. Uh, how do you go about finding actors for these smaller roles? Are you, uh, do you like, I know you're kind of in the New York area, do you go see like brought, uh, shows or theater? Well, I mean, before the pandemic. Well, yeah. <laughs> everybody right. in my office would be in the theater, you know, multiple times a week. Um, That's a good perk, by the way. Well, you have to pay for it. work in your office, yeah. Well. Everybody oh, they don't gave. give it to you for free? No. Really? Oh my no. gosh. Um, but it's just the job, you know? It's, it's your job as a casting director to know as much about the people who will be great at doing one or two lines than the people who can carry the whole thing. It's, it's just understanding the, what's appropriate. And you, you read people, you know? Um, in this era of self-tapes, what makes a good self-tape for you? Like when were you actually want to call them back? I haven't been doing any self-tapes. Oh yeah? That's amazing. I mean, yeah. I, I, that, no, I think that's great. I mean, I, I love being in the room actually, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, I think as soon as, as soon as we could see, I guess it was March, 2020 to June that we were down and you know, I have two brilliant casting associates and I just said to them, like, I didn't talk to other casting directors and I just said, figure out whatever way it is to replicate the audition room. And I thought it was gonna be really expensive, but it wasn't. So then uh, I guess to, to, to ask a, the question a different way, like what makes a good audition for you? Where even if they're kind of not right for the part, you're like, I, I, will, I want to bring him in or her in for something uh, else down the road. I mean, it's so simple. It's really just um, paying attention to the material and doing it justice and being truthful in that way. There's, there's no trick. That's, that is the trick. Oh, well, that's good. I've never heard that before. Yeah. Nice. Um, and then my, uh, my just final question that I love to ask uh, everybody, what has been like, what's your craziest audition story? When I was at, so this is in the 80s. Oh God, I, I've told the story, but now I don't remember what. Oh, yes, I do. Uh, I was at ABC and um, <laughs> it's not an audition story. It's just a, the lengths people will go to. And somebody came to the office dressed as a giant bunny to present their resume. But was it around I, was it around I, Easter? I can't remember. <laughs> but it was definitely something that leaves you rather speechless. Um, I don't really have crazy audition stories. I feel like we're both there to do our jobs. And for the most part, you know, that's what happens. You know, if people come prepared, or maybe I, I have a reputation that you should be prepared because I'm there to work too. And I I don't I don't have any of those like Sigourney Weaver stories. <laughs> well, hey, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. My I, pleasure. I, I seriously love every show you do. It's <laughs> just, uh, yeah, it's just phenomenal the 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 work that you put in, and it's great. Um, so thank you so much for chatting with me, and uh, I hope I get a chance to talk to you again. Thank you. That's very kind. <laughs>